What up, family? And welcome back to Dope Brown Chick. And today we're talking about where I started in my weight loss journey. Um, it hasn't been an easy uh, thing to talk about because I don't generally talk about the number in which I started from because I'm embarrassed. But um, I really don't have a reason to be embarrassed because, I mean, it, it's all brought me here and it's brought me to this journey, so I shouldn't be embarrassed. But it's such a high number, you know, it gets a little difficult to talk about. So my official uh, starting weight before I embarked on my weight loss journey was 405 pounds. My heaviest weight was 405 pounds. Um, a lot of things led up to me being that heavy, but when I initially saw the number, y'all can't even understand how hurt my feelings were. 405 pounds is a lot. That's a lot of people. That's that's a lot of weight. That That's just a lot. And to know that I had actually reached 400, like crossed over the threes, because I, my whole mindset, and it wasn't a healthy mindset, my whole mindset was that, um, as I stayed in the threes, because I've been hovering around the threes since I was probably about 16 years old, I had been hovering in the three section. I was cool in the three section. Section three was where I resided and I was comfortable. But as soon as I hit four, honey, I got depressed. I got heavily depressed. And honestly, being depressed is part of what got me into the fours. So when I was 400 pounds, um, everything hurt. It was hard to get sleep. It was hard to do anything. It was hard to exist and function normally at 400 and some odd pounds. Being 400 some odd pounds has such an effect on how you navigate daily life. Like you don't want to walk too far. You don't want to do too much because it's hot and you're tugging a lot with you. It's it's not cool. It's not cool um, in terms of how I want to live my life on a daily basis. So... At 400 pounds, life was a lot different. It's it's a lot different. You become very aware once you know how much you weigh. You become very aware of your insecurities. Everything becomes heightened by 10. What you wear, how you look in what you wear, everything becomes heightened by 10. Um, and as a single woman, well, I'm not single but as a single person then and you don't want to be single in your 30s and you don't want to be 400 pounds in your 30s makes it a whole lot difficult to be social because you fear that you're being judged and because I was a person who was bullied a lot when I was being bullied it made me very aware of how judgmental people can be about who you are in the present moment. I don't like it. I don't like it. Because it doesn't matter how heavy you are, everyone deserves to be treated with respect. Period. Point blank. Everyone deserves to be treated with respect. But some somewhere along the way, and I'm not sure how we arrived there, People got it in their minds that it's perfectly okay to be disrespectful and very short and mean 
to people who look differently than they do. And as kids, as a child, it, it became normal for me to get that kind of response from people regarding my size. But as an adult, you would think people would grow up and do something different, but they don't. And I, I don't understand why. I don't understand why people have to be so evil. And I've gotten evil comments. And not necessarily evil, but definitely mean, unwarranted, unneeded, unnecessary, uh, all the uns. And I didn't learn how to be unbothered. I've received hurtful comments from multiple people. And as you get to know me and get to be more involved in my channel, you will understand that I am a at the heart church girl. And when I was probably about 12 years old, I, you know, I was a pudgy 12 year old. I like to eat. My mama can cook. I don't know what to tell you. I received somebody at church said something to me that was so rude. I mean, so rude. I had never wanted to fight in church and I had never wanted to fight an adult in church ever. But that day, that day I was ready to take him to the river because it was unnecessary. It was completely uncalled for. And you know, if you go to a black church after church is over, they got something to eat. It's either going to be church punch, it's going to be cookies, cakes, donuts, chips, hot dogs. And when you a kid, you know, they pass out candy to kids at church like it's money. So I wasn't turning nothing down. I, I wasn't saying no to the donuts. I wasn't saying no to the cakes because they're delicious. And when the mother of the church starts to bake some cakes... You have to take a part of the program. But anywho, when they had donuts at the church this one time, and I went to grab a donut, just one donut. I didn't have four in a napkin wrapped up like I could have. But it was just one donut. Like, I couldn't quite understand why they were tripping off of a donut. But moving on. So I went up to the table to grab me a donut. And this woman, who was older than I am, um, not that much, but she was definitely an adult at the time when I was a kid. She came up to me and looked me dead in the eye and said, you know you don't need another donut. And walked off. Ma'am. And people don't believe words hurt. Look, I, I, I am a Christian. And the Bible says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. So if life and death are in the power of the tongue, what makes you think words don't hurt? Just saying. But I looked at her and I put the donut down and I went into the bathroom and cried my eyes out over this because I couldn't understand. I had been, she wasn't necessarily a mean person, but I couldn't understand why she would say something like that out of her mouth. And even, even after that, I never quite looked at her the same anymore. In fact, I didn't look at people at church the same anymore because it's not she's not the only person who ever she's not the only person who said something about my weight and got away with it. Cause I couldn't I couldn't tell my mama. Because if you ever meet my mama, it ain't gonna be pretty. But I I held that with me and for a long time I wouldn't eat in public. I wouldn't eat in public. Because I always felt like because of my size, people were watching me. I didn't like going to the gym because I felt like people were watching me. And that's a hurtful way to actually, you know, 
live. It is a hurtful way to exist because when you're a person who don't want no drama, don't want no smoke, you barely want people to talk to you and someone says something out of the way like that, it makes you very um, withdrawn. You shut down and you don't want to be bothered. And at this point, I wasn't even 400 pounds. I wasn't even 300 pounds. I was just a chunky teenager. Having an adult critique my body. How fair is that? First of all, how appropriate is that? Let's start there. But going back to my 400 pound life. Um, at the very height of my heaviness, it became very difficult to to survive on my own. Because um, you don't want to hang out with friends because you're scared someone's going to mention it. It's like the elephant in the room, for lack of a better term. It's You feel like everyone notices it, but you're hoping everyone doesn't notice it. It's like having a huge zit on your nose that you are just pretending isn't there. And until I could address the issues with myself, I stayed locked up in my room for a good... It was a good seven or eight months. It was a good seven or eight months. Because I hit 400 twice. I hit 400 twice. The first time I hit 400, I rolled out. I found a school to go to in New York and I rolled out because I was unhappy. I was super unhappy. But the second time I hit 400, I was snacking. I was straight up eating and I ain't got no, I ain't got no shame about it. Um, but I was eating and some of it was out of emotional eating because that's my coping mechanism. When I'm emotional, upset, sad, hurt, I eat. And in 2017, was it 2017 or 2018? No, 2018. In 2018, I had gone through a lot. Like, I was going through a whole lot. I had lost my grandfather. I had lost my job. Um, you're 30-something years old, and you're not exactly where you want to be. You hadn't reached the goals that you wanted to accomplish, and then dealing with fear. Everything was starting to build up, and everything was starting to get on my nerves actually so it it was a rough 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 patch and multiple uh family members had passed away at this point it was it was hard it was really 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 hard but some of the main issues i had when i was like 400 pounds were clothes shopping was one of them because, once again, I'm bottom heavy. It's hard to find a pair of pants that fit over a big booty. It, and... I just shout out to the big booty girls, because it wasn't fun. I don't, I didn't like shopping. I would shop online just, you know, guesstimating my size, hoping that it would work out. And sometimes it did, and sometimes it didn't, and sometimes I, you know... I would just sit there, look at it, and just cry because I couldn't figure out how I got myself into this position and how I got myself into this situation. Um, Another thing that was really hard when I was 400 pounds was um, going to the gym. Because I, I would still go work out on occasion. And... This is why you can't judge a book by its cover because you could be heavy, you could be eating right, you could be going to the gym, you could be doing all of the things that you're supposed to be doing. And it's just hard to get the weight off of you. It's, it's, it takes a minute to find what works. But I was doing all of these things and I would lose like a pound a month. But when I would go to the gym to work out, it just felt like everyone was staring at me. And some of it was mental some of it was just internal like i felt like everyone was watching because i was so heavy and some of it was reality because there would be people staring at me at the bike or staring at me on the elliptical um 
like I didn't belong there. And I think that's the hardest part about being um, really, really heavy is feeling like you don't belong anywhere. Like you feel like you don't fit in any place that you go. You feel like that everything is not suited for you because things are, are, you just start to be hyper aware of everything that's going on around you. So you start to feel like you don't belong. You, you don't feel cute. And this is not... Because there's, there's a model on Instagram who is a heavy girl. And she is bad. Like, bad. But your badness doesn't come from your size, is what I learned. However, I just wasn't feeling confident in myself. So because I, I wasn't feeling confident in myself... I didn't feel like I belonged. I didn't want to hang out with my friends because I didn't feel like I belonged. I didn't want to go to church because I didn't feel like I belonged. And as humans, it's important that we feel like we belong somewhere. And luckily, I have really good friends because when I start to feel like I don't belong, I hit a real dark patch. I withdraw. I don't want to be involved. I don't want to talk to my friends. I don't want to go out. I literally want to stay in one place and leave me alone and let me be great. But I have really good friends that kind of waited me out of that um, dark period. They didn't give up on me. They didn't stop talking to me. They didn't stop communicating. They didn't stop inviting me places. And I promise when this quarantine is over, I'm going all the places. I don't care. But they, they were super supportive and they weren't mean. They weren't mean and what I've learned is that this world is mean. It's so mean. It's not kind if you don't fit into, you know, their box. But I, at that point of me being 400 pounds, I actually had to own and accept who I was. That was the beginning of me owning and accepting who I was as a human being and owning and accepting all of the gifts that I had, no matter what I looked like. Because when you have a mission and you have something to do, it doesn't matter your condition in the moment. You still have to do what you have to do. And honestly, there were points and there were spots in um, this weight loss journey that I'm on where I completely didn't care about what it is that I'm supposed to be doing because I just felt like I wasn't good enough. And life as a 400 pound woman will make you feel like you're not good enough. And it hurts. It hurts. Because all we ever want is love. All we ever want is acceptance. And because we're taught that we have to be a certain way sometimes. It's hard to accept who you are without trying to conform to someone else's vision of who you should be. My 400 pound life was not easy. Easy at all. It wasn't easy at all. Um, there were a couple of times where the depression got so bad, I thought some thoughts that I shouldn't have been thinking. It, it was not a, a very happy moment for me. But I'm grateful for being 400 pounds. I'm super grateful for being 400 pounds because it taught me that I'm beautiful no matter what. It taught me that there are people that are going to love you for who you are regardless of what you look like. There are people that will take a chance on you regardless of what you look like. I also learned um, in this 400 pound stint how to make it work. Um, because my clothes didn't always fit in my all this it's in just it's just hard to fit a 400 pound body. I don't care how curvy you are. It's hard to fit a 405 pound body. It's not you got to make it work. You got to make it do what it do. If you got to buy your pants from here and your top from here, like I could never buy one complete outfit from one store. <coughs> I can never buy one complete outfit from one store. So I had to learn how to make it work. 
with pieces that most people wouldn't have to make it work with. And the other thing I learned being 400 pounds was that you can always change. You don't have to... Accepting yourself doesn't necessarily mean accepting your condition because you can change your condition. You can change who you are. You can change and be the person that you want to be, but you have to realize that you have a whole lot more power than you realize. And when you start to realize that you have a whole lot more power and you start snatching back your power from people who have abused that power and the people that you've given power to over your life, over your existence, over your body, you realize that you have a whole lot more power when you start snatching it back. I learned a whole lot being 400 pounds. Um, it, it was enlightening and it was a growth process. It taught me that you can only stay in darkness for so long before it starts to eat at you. It starts to uh, control you and it starts to hinder who you are and who you could be because you're so focused on other things um, that actually have no meaning, that have no power. My 400 pound life was not okay. And honestly, I just... I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for it because I could still be 400 pounds. I could still be upset. I could still be mad. I could still be hurt over those who hurt me. And I could have not, you know, grown the way that I have. But I'm so grateful for the growth process. And I'm so grateful for my weight loss journey so far. And yeah, it's been, it's, it's, it's been an interesting ride so far. And I can't wait to see where it goes because I have a whole lot more to go. I do. So, yep. That's been my 400 pound life. It, yeah. 405 pounds is where I started. And now I'm under three. I am under 300 pounds now which is huge because I was hovering around 316 um, since high school. But we'll get to the high school stories later because those, those are interesting. So, yeah. It's been another episode of Dope Brown Chick. I want you guys to like. I want you guys to comment. I want you guys to subscribe to my channel. Um, we're going to get everything up and running very, very soon. I'm hoping within the next week or so um, I can start, you know, posting videos every week. But, you know, it took me a minute because I had to wash all of this hair. And washing all of this hair makes me sad inside because it's a lot to do. It's a four hour process. How fun is that? So until next time, thanks for rocking with a sister. Like, comment, and subscribe. Like I said, because, you know, I need your support. And um, I'll holler at you guys in a few days, all right? So be easy, my family. Love you guys. Peace.